So what is design thinking really? Because there's an awful lot written about it from a whole pile of different perspectives. Um, design thinking is at its core, a codified creative process. So it's not rocket science. It's a human-centered way of problem finding as well as problem solving uh, based on empathy, uh, on collaboration, on, and on experimenting and iteration. Uh, it's made up of, of a number of different aspects and people come into it at different levels. So if you can imagine a Venn diagram, it's made up of tools and methodology, and those are the things that people tend to engage with first because they're the easiest. So you might have heard of journey maps or empathy maps or problem framing, uh, personas, a bunch of tools that you can use to get a better, more human-centered outcome. Uh, there are also a bunch of methodologies, so there are oh, hundreds of different design thinking processes or models that you can have a look at, each of which has its own pluses and minuses. Um, then you've got in this part a set of skills that you need if you want to operate really well in this space. And those are skills like questioning and listening, uh, being able to interview, being able to synthesize from a whole pile of information to get down to the nuggets and to find the insights. Um, knowing how to facilitate and to get people involved and engaged in what you're doing. So those are skills which are behavioral and they take a lot longer to learn than just using the tools. Uh, and finally, there's a mindset. The mindset piece is probably the most important and it's where the magic is. And it's also the most difficult because the mindset piece is about your habits of mind. It's about the way you automatically think and about the assumptions you have around reality. So the mindset piece that you need to develop to be really good in this space are, uh, is a mindset of empathy, of curiosity, of playfulness, um, of creativity, uh, of experimentation, of thinking, you know, is this good enough and how can I make it better? So there are a number of mindsets that stick with this. And if you get the right mindset, if you do that, then any tool in your current toolkit, whether it's a design thinking tool or not, any tool can become a design thinking tool. So tools, skills, which take a bit longer because it's behavior change, and mindset, which takes the longest still because it's dealing with your unconscious habits of thinking. Those are the essence of um, what sits underneath design thinking. Uh, there are a number of principles in design thinking which are what uh, describe the orientation of the approach because you'd say it's not a method, it's an approach. And getting those principles right or working within those principles is the thing that leads you down the path that makes it a design thinking rather than a standard business process. So there are seven of those. First is that it's human centered. It is always about how are you helping somebody do something that's important to them. So everything comes back to the person in the middle, which is why empathy is so important in this space. It's about uh, it's, it's about creating an experience. So it's not solving a problem. You have to think about it in terms of what's the experience you're going for? Why does this matter for somebody? How is it going to be for them to interact with it in whatever level you're doing it? It's collaborative. Uh, so it's not a black box solution thing. You've got to work with the people that you're helping and with whoever else you have that's going to contribute, but it's very collaborative. Not Lone Ranger goes off and comes back the hero with the amazing solution. So you've got to get everybody involved early. Um, it's optimistic and it's creative. So instead of focusing on what's the thing that you're getting rid of, which is really what problem solving is about, you're focusing on What's the new thing we want to bring into being? What's this new reality that we want to create? And the optimism is thinking that it's possible. You're going to be able to do it, and you're going to be able to do it in a way that's relevant. Um, it's about experimenting and iterating. So with design thinking, it should actually be called design doing because you don't really uh, think about the solution and come up with it. You try stuff. So you do to learn uh, and you make to think. So it's all about trying stuff out and then iterating to make it better and better and better until you get to something that really works for you. 
It's holistic, which means that you have to consider the whole ecosystem when you're doing it. It's not done in isolation, which problems are often solved in isolation. So this is about what, what else is going on that's going to impact this? How's it going to affect other people? What's, what, are the, what are the intended and unintended consequences of working in the way that you're working? And finally, it's, it's about relevance, which is really if you do all the other principles, what you're doing is building in relevance. So if you think that uh, innovation, for example, has between a 70 and 96% fail rate, then relevance is, is your god here. Relevance is critical. And the way that design thinking works is all about creating relevance and building it in from the beginning. So if you have other people involved, if you're iterating to go through, if you're working to a solution that is meaningful and helps them do something that matters to them, then you build in relevance from the beginning. And that is what makes it such a powerful approach to take to the really messy, wicked problems that we have today. If you want to know more about design thinking and some of the basic tools, then please download my free ebook that goes through the basic principles of design thinking, as well as three of the core tools and helps you take them to a whole new level.